Thank you for checking out this movie review video. So this is going to be for Puppet Master The Littlest Reich, which is a 2018 film that I believe at the moment is only available as far as like streaming services and things like that, only on Shudder. I believe it's exclusive to them, although it can be purchased on DVD and Blu-ray, I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure. Uh, based off a number I have here. But let me say real quick before I get into the actual review, a few things. One, please hit that subscribe. Please, please, please. Believe it or not, that motivates me greatly with making films and as people, or with making films, with making these YouTube videos. As people have been able to see, I've been putting out a lot more content and I will put even more out and continue to go strong with it if I keep getting that kind of encouragement. So subscribers really helps with that. But also what helps is comments. So put some comments below. You can talk about this film with me. You can talk about other films of its same ilk. Things like that. Just like to get nerdy, like to interact with people. And believe it or not, that's what motivates me to do these these um, these videos. So that would be awesome. The other thing is I'm not going to have any spoilers for this review. And that's for two reasons. Two reasons. I went like this, so it looks like one. Two reasons. Uh, the first reason being it's a relatively newer film. It's from 2018. So... I don't want to throw spoilers out there in case people still want to see it. They want a bit of a review, but they don't want the spoilers if they want to see it. Uh, the other reason being, for a Puppet Master film, I feel like you don't need spoilers to review it. Because people who are familiar with Puppet Master, either, you, either you've seen some before or you know about them, you, you kind of know what you're going to get. And that is the case with this film. So it doesn't really need spoilers. So I'm not doing spoilers. All right, now into the actual review. Uh, I couldn't find budgetary information on this film, just so you know. Uh, with a lot of the older films that I end up reviewing here, uh, I can find that information mainly because they've been to the box office. So the budgetary information versus the box office income gets thrown out there. Uh, with this one, no budgetary information that I could find online. Maybe it's somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Uh, but it's low budget. You can tell by watching it, it's very low budget. But that said... I think they got some decent actors to kind of carry it through to mix in there with the not so good actors and actresses who you're just like, mm, yeah, that's low budget acting for you. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, sales, Blu-ray and DVD, $643,614. So know that. That's not bad. In my, in my opinion, for this day and age, I feel like that's not bad. For the 13th Puppet Master movie, I feel like that's not bad income, honestly. And obviously that'll keep going. Not massively, but you know. This one was written by S. Craig Zoller, or Zaylor. Um, he wrote and directed the film Bone Tomahawk, which I will say I have not seen Bone Tomahawk, but anytime it's ever come up in like a conversation or when I've seen something about it online or in a podcast or whatever, it's been favorable. People have always said good things about it. So I do want to check that out. That is one, I believe it's in my Netflix DVD queue at the moment. Yes, I still do Netflix DVD. And the reason for that being they have a lot of older stuff that's not on Blu-ray now. So it's better than the Blu-ray service for that reason. Better selection. Um, but yeah, I believe Bone Tomahawk's in my DVD queue. So uh, this film was directed by Sonny Laguna and Tommy Wickland. And they are some two Swedish guys who apparently direct everything together and I was looking and they have a bunch of credits uh, they, I think they have 10 credits uh, as a team 10 credits all together on imdb.com but I've not heard of any of the other stuff they've done so it looks like they're mainly just doing like low budget horror stuff which hey you know if that's a career for you and it works all for it we need low budget horror that's that's great kind of horror genre thrives on that really so this was the very first film of Fangoria Presents. I don't know if people know, but Fangoria Magazine had gone out of business some time ago. And very recently, it was purchased by, I think the company's called like Cinestate or something like that. And they, they purchased Fangoria. So they're doing all these things like they're trying to get involved in film. And obviously, there's, they revamped the magazine, but they're also doing, like, podcasts. Mick Garris, his post-mortem podcast, which I've been listening to for a while now, and it is very good. I do recommend it. He just moved over to being under Fangoria, so they're going for podcasts. They're going for films. Now, Puppet Master of the Little Strike is the very first Fangoria Presents film, so thus far, I'm down with it. If they keep trying to bankroll stuff like this, it's I'm, I'm down. Good. 
I'm not a Fangoria magazine fan, although I've heard that it's kind of changed from what it used to be, so maybe it's worth a look. But anyway, like I said, this is the 13th Puppet Master film. I will tell you right now, I have not seen all of them. I've seen, I think, the first four or five, so obviously yeah, I have some catching up to do. So I was just like, first four or five, and then skip to number 13. Oh well, you know, I feel like there's not a whole lot that I have to know in those other films. That's just kind of how it is. Okay, so as far as certain actors showing up in this film, very happy to see Udo Kier in this film. Does a great job. Real fun to see him in it. Um, Barbara Crampton, always great to see Barbara Crampton. I really like her because I heard a really awesome interview with her actually on uh, Mick Garris' Postmortem podcast, and she was talking about how she really wasn't into horror film for the longest time, even though she was an actress in it. And then she kind of uh, um, understood that by going to some of these horror conventions that there's a huge fan base that can, you know, really support her and really does support her. And that kind of got her into it and being like, you know, maybe I should kind of immerse myself a little bit more in the horror genre, not just continuing to act within it, but also, you know, watching these films and knowing more. So she started watching a lot of horror films and she's really boned up on her horror genre knowledge which is really awesome she's very active on social media and i think people should check her out i follow her on twitter and she's always throwing out really cool stuff and she's still working and she's working a lot and a lot of that has to do with the horror community and how people really love what she's done in the past and i think people are really loving her newfound well newfound over the past bunch of years um enthusiasm for the genre so that's awesome and then tom lennon Tom Lennon, yes, mainly known for comedic acting. Everyone knows him for Reno 911, pretty much, but he's done some other stuff. He's a very good actor, in my opinion, and he does a really good job in this film. And he does the comedic stuff properly, but he actually doesn't do a lot of comedic stuff in this just because of how his character's written. But um, I was kind of surprised to see him in it. I kind of felt like, isn't he still working? Isn't he still getting stuff? And if he's not, why not? Because this guy is a good actor. So anyway, it was good to see him in there. He did a really good job. Um, I dug the concept of this film, of how they got to having the puppets around. A lot of times with these films, you know, it's all the ideas have been taken, especially when this is the 13th in a series of them. Um, so it's kind of hard to keep it fresh. It's kind of hard to come up with a concept of how you would get these, pu these puppets working again and killing. And people be like, oh, okay. Uh, usually people just be like, oh, yeah, this again, or that doesn't make any sense. But no, the, the premise of how everything comes together, I actually was down with. I was like, sure, makes sense. I'm, I'm good with it. So it wasn't like crazy outlandish and dumb. So I like that about it. Uh, people get naked a lot in this film, at least within the first like half hour, I'd say. Uh, yeah, so you know it's kind of like an old school horror throwback to, you know, like 1989 when the very first one was done. Actually, I don't remember remember if there was all that much nudity in that or any of the other ones. But it's kind of going back to the whole like 80s horror craze where they're throwing a lot of nudity into the film. So if you have a problem with that, sorry, there's a lot of nudity in this and, and a lot of sex as well, so... You know, but just letting you know. Uh, the gore and practical effects were quite good in this, actually. And there was a lot of it. With a low budget, there's a tendency a lot of times to cut back on that stuff. So I was really happy to see that they kind of spent money wisely. And that's what people want to see. I mean, between the fact that people want to see the puppets, and they want to see the puppets killing, they want to see good gore and good practical effects. And it delivered. I really feel like this film delivered strongly in that department. There is one death in particular in this film that I I really liked. I thought it was super creative, and I thought it was really funny. A lot of them are good, but there's one in particular I'm talking about. And if anyone out there watching this has seen this, comment down below and let me know which death you think it was that I'm referring to. I have a feeling that if you have seen this, you can guess which one that is, because it's funny too. So anyway, yeah, so totally on board with the gore, practical effects, good job. Uh, I feel like they did a really good job of having a balance between the comedy and the uh, horror violence in the film. And a lot of times it's really hard to kind of put those things together properly. 
there have been plenty of films that I've watched where, you know, they're trying to make it like a comedy horror, but you're just like, yeah, these things aren't meshing really well. I think they did a pretty good job. There wasn't too much comedy, and there was a good amount of horror violence that, you know, obviously people are watching the film for for that. So it was a nice mix, in my opinion. There's plenty of the puppets in this, like I said a little bit earlier. There are lots and lots of puppets. There's lots of puppet screen time, and there are a lot of different puppets, including new ones, which I love. Like, I'm all about watching films like this and trying to see, oh, what type of designs did they come up with for the creatures? And that's one of the main fun things for me with movies like this. So I was really, really happy to see so many different puppets and to see so much puppet screen time. It's great. And they look good. Like, the designs on them were quite good, especially for, you know, this is a low-budget film. Um, once again, putting their money in the right places, executing it properly. Um, okay, uh, thankfully, at the end of this, I'm going to say this, this is not really a spoiler, but there's a possibility for them to do more. And that's probably not a shock to anyone. I'm for it, honestly. If... if they're going to do another film that's in the same vein as this, uh, executed very much the same. I'm, I'm down. I'd watch it. I'm not going to like rush out and be like, I need to buy this. I need to own this, but I'm going to watch it. You know, if it goes back to shutter again, make it another Fangoria presents. Let's do this. I'm down with it. Bring back the same director, same writer. I'm in. Uh, and then the last thing I kind of want to say is that, you know, like I said, I believe this is ex exclusively on shutter as far as like streaming goes. It's not on TV or anything or in theaters. And I really think that this kind of plays to how Shudder can bring people in, more people in and keep people with their service. I've been super impressed. I know I've said it on other videos before, but I've been super impressed with how Shudder has developed over the past year now. And it's it's been awesome. I mean, it's cheap. It's like five bucks a month, four bucks a month if you buy a whole year in advance. And it's so worth it. They're getting so many good films now. They're getting a lot of good material that's coming straight to them. Um, you know, this Puppet Master is a great example of something that's really fun there. And I think that a lot of people that are coming into it are looking for that kind of horror nostalgia, like 80s, 90s, 70s even, reaching back to the 70s. They're looking for that type of nostalgia. So getting more films and more series like Puppet Master on there would be great. And I'm not I'm not just talking like the movies that are already done. I'm talking like what they've done with Puppet Master The Littlest Reich is reaching out there and getting this new thing and saying this is going to be ours exclusively and that will help bring these people in who are there for the nostalgia. They're there they're there because they love and like, "Oh man, you know, 80s horror was the best time. It was the best time." And you're going to pull those types of people in. I mean, they have coming up this week on the 21st the uh, a new series that they're premiering strictly through Shutter, and it's for Critters, another 80s throwback. So awesome. And then on the 29th, Friday the 29th, they're going to have the launch of the Joe Bob Briggs Last Drive-In series, which at first it said ongoing series and it said weekly series, so I kind of thought it was just going on kind of in perpetuity until they decided it's not, it's just not having a return anymore, but that's not the case. It's actually only going to go for nine weeks weeks it's only gonna be nine episodes but it starts on the 29th and it's going to be nine episodes and it'll be a double feature of films each time and i think that's that speaks also to the type of people that are being brought in because they got a lot of traction with joe bob briggs and he's very much a throwback to doing a lot of those kind of 80s he even reaches back to like the 70s um uh has he done 90s he's done a little bit of 90s as well but that kind of like chunk so anyway enough about that i rant about how much I love Shudder, because can you tell? Can you tell how much I love Shudder? I do. Anyway, uh, that said, I'm grading this realistically. When I'm doing these movie reviews, I'm giving star ratings out of five, and I can do halves. I am grading this film realistically. All of what I've been saying is positive, but when I stack this up against other films, I need my star rating to make sense. So for this reason, I give this two stars as a overall film. That said... It's super low budget. There's not a whole lot to it. It's nothing like super new or anything, but it's fun. And if you're a Puppet Master fan, you're going to love it. Well, maybe not love it, but you're going to at least like it. You're going to have a fun time. It's going to be good. So also, if you're just 80s horror fan in general, it's going to be a good time. 
So I'd like to give recommendations at the end of this. Shout out to Uncle Pete, subscriber Uncle Pete, who um, wanted me to start doing this, so I'm going to keep doing it. So I'm going to recommend, based off this film, that people go watch Ghoulies. If you have not seen Ghoulies or any of the Ghoulies films, go check it out. Although start with one. You know, let's go chronologically, people. Start with number one. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it's in the same vein. You know, like little things going around killing people. It's a good time. So anyway, thank you once again, everyone, for checking this out. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Like I said, please hit the subscribe button. It takes you literally a second. And uh, if you want to know every time I put up videos, which I'm doing more often recently, hit that notification bell. It'll let you know. Comments, please. Let's talk about this stuff. Can you guess which... Uh, death scene I was saying was my favorite let's find out and then thumbs up it's always nice encourage me encourage me to do more and like I said give me some recommendations but you have to be a subscriber but thank you so much and until next time keep it brutal